Thank you. So before starting, uh, I have uh, I need to say that uh, there is no uh, any results yet. So this will be probably a uh, discussion uh, of the topic. Uh, so before starting, I would just like to say a few words about me. So I have done my bachelor in Armenia uh, in the Faculty of Physics in the Department of Optics. And I've done my master in uh, Dijon, France, in the Univers Université Bourgogne de Comté in the Physics, Photonics, and Nanotechnology master. So, what is the project about? Uh, the main purpose uh, is to investigate phase transformation in the crystal structure, uh, silicium dioxide, using a femtosecond laser, and to capture a phase transition, uh, to try to capture a phase transition in the amorphous structure. Uh, mainly crystallization and control the process using a femtosecond laser. Uh, why have we chosen uh, silica glass? Because uh, there is uh, a variety of applications all over the world, like waveguides, bright fibers, transistors, computer chips, and solar cells. And in uh, almost all of these applications, uh, it is used because of its uh, semiconducting uh, nature. Uh, but what uh, what interests us the most is the data storage applications. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, this is a, a picture showing uh, ultrafast laser processing of glass. Uh, so the uh, process, uh, the mechanism is uh, not difficult. So we uh, focus a laser uh, inside the uh, glass. Uh, inside the glass, and we try to create a waveguide. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, depending on the material, we need to choose uh, precisely uh, what kind of laser we are going to use, like the uh, pulse duration, repetition rate, uh, energy, the scanning speed, uh, etc. Uh, so, we create uh, uh, this kind of uh, little uh, focal volumes uh, in the glass, uh, so the, these uh, volumes uh, should be precisely periodic, uh, and uh, and, this, and the size, the length uh, of a single focal volume is about uh, one micron, a little more than one micron, and they are uh, stored very close to each other. Uh, so why is glass uh, a good material uh, for data storage? Because we can uh, store up to 500 terabytes in a little piece of glass. Uh, it is low cost and it is eternal. Uh, but how to increase the size resolution, which is uh, the which, which means how to increase the data storage density? Uh, so this is the processing mechanism. Uh, so this picture uh, shows this mechanism in uh, aluminum sapphire, but we are going to uh, use the same mechanism for our material. So we take a laser, uh, uh, we focus the laser with a lens with a, a big numerical aperture inside our material and we create a micro explosion in the center of it. Uh, after uh, the micro explosion, we obtain in this micro exploded area uh, plasma, uh, which uh, acts like a shock wave and it compresses the material around it. And finally, uh, we will have a nanovoid, an empty area in the center, and we will have an ultra-dense, uh, densified amorphous phase around the material. Uh, uh, this is a model of laser glass uh, interaction uh, done by a Japanese group uh, in 2022. Uh, I need to say that this simulation was done on the fastest supercomputer in the world. Uh, so, uh, what they did, they uh, coupled uh, three different areas, the molecular dynamics, quantum dynamics of electrons, and electromagnetics for laser field, which is basically the solution solving uh, uh, Maxwell equations. Uh, and uh, under the image, you see that uh, uh, under the image, you see that uh, the parameters of the simulation, you see that the simulation time is very, very short. Uh, it's one of the drawbacks because the, uh, it is limited to thin films and short times, and, is, uh, and it is computationally heavy. Uh, so we need to improve this. Uh, the methods to do that uh, has uh, have four steps. So the first uh, two steps are uh, finding different time domain solution for Maxwell equations. 
uh, and the electron quantum dynamics, uh, which is ab initio method. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Professor Colombier uh, told you, we have a big team uh, and uh, anyone, everyone uh, is specialized on some specific works. So, under uh, my responsibility will be the uh, uh, last two steps, molecular dynamics and electron collisional dynamics. Uh, I have already started with the third step, so I am using the uh, large-scale atomic molecular massively parallel simulator uh, called LAMPS. Uh, for the molecular dynamics. Uh, it's a program which uh, uh, does a simulation by uh, solving the uh, Newton's equations of motion uh, with uh, Verle algorithm. And after that, we use the Obito uh, visualization and analysis software uh, to generate the output data that we obtained in the molecular dynamics in LAMPS. Uh, so, uh, above the, these little images, you can see the websites. If you are interested, you can go there and read more about it. Uh, to start our simulation, firstly, we need to have a good uh, input structure, uh, which should be fused silica. Uh, how to obtain that? We do the standard uh, <coughs> heating quenching uh, process. Uh, so, firstly, we uh, take a very little structure of alpha quartz, which consists of nine atoms, three silicium and uh, six oxygen atoms. We replicate it in three, all three directions uh, uh, by a factor of five or six to obtain at least uh, 2,000 uh, atoms because uh, in lumps uh, there is always a size factor, so we need to have at least a few thousand of atoms uh, to not have this uh, size effect. Uh, so we create the alpha structure, alpha quartz at zero Kelvin. And then we heat it up to 4,000 Kelvin by 4,000 because uh, it's uh, quite higher than the uh, melting te temperature of uh, quartz. Uh, we take this big value because there is uh, in all of the uh, molecular dynamics programs, there is always a melting temperature overestimation factor. Uh, so we heat it up to 4,000 Kelvin, then we anneal it for, uh, for a few uh, picoseconds. Then we start to uh, do a fast quench up to 300 Kelvin. And finally, we will have a solid uh, amorphous fused silica at 300 Kelvin. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, with lamps, uh, it is uh, uh, to do uh, the simulation, uh, molecular dynamic simulation in lamps, uh, we need to uh, choose a, a interatomic potential and uh, uh, ensemble that we are going to work it. Uh, it can be MPT ensemble, MVE or MVT. Uh, so this is a devitrification mechanism of uh, cuprum titanium metallic glass uh, obtained by my uh, colleague uh, Jafari Abaden, who is going to defend his PhD thesis in, in two weeks. Uh, so uh, he, so we see the amorphous structure of this metallic glass, uh, uh, where it's completely amorphous at the first key time, uh, uh, and we see that we, when we propagate uh, uh, the laser in uh, positive x direction, uh, we notice uh, so devitrification at different time steps. Uh, uh, in the same, uh, in the laser propagation direction. So this is something that we uh, want to obtain for our material, uh, but uh, the difference is that this is a metallic glass and we are going to work with silica. So we need to uh, take into consideration the difference of the materials. Uh, the main difference is that uh, in case of a few silica, uh, we will have uh, another step in the beginning, which is the free electron generation. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, two steps, multi-photon absorption and avalanche. Uh, so, uh, so we need to calculate also uh, the possibility that uh, due to the non-linearity uh, of the material, uh, uh, the atoms, uh, the electrons can uh, absorb uh, a few photons at the same time. Uh, so they will go to the valence band, to the conduction band, and we will have, we will have an avalanche. 
the other, uh, the other uh, phenomena that happens due to the uh, laser irradiation and after removing the laser uh, will be calculated. Uh, some of them will be calculated in uh, molecular dynamics, so it already includes. Uh, and some of them will be uh, calculated by my uh, colleague in the density functional theory. Uh, for example, the uh, electron lattice heating, which is uh, basically the electron phonon interaction. So the, we have three theoretical challenges. Uh, one of them is coupling of electron relaxation dynamics and electromagnetic modeling. The second is coupling the electron dynamics, uh, so the electromagnetics and collisions with molecular dynamics, as I told you, and to reach mesoscales, which is uh, big cells of atoms, uh, about one million atoms. Thank you. <laughs>